already heard some good things, brother. I'm very thankful for what the gospel produces. This is what the gospel produces. When the gospel is preached, it has an effect. Those who serve and labor in the gospel, they will produce. They will have an effect. People, you are, you brethren here today, are a product because someone served and labored in the gospel. Jesus served. He, he showed us first. He's the first one to show us how to be a servant. How did he serve? Unto death. That's how we serve. Unto death. That's how we labor. Unto death. Paul served and labored. So who, who does this laboring? What kind of people does this laboring? Well, the people that God has called. The people that God is, he is, he, this is his gospel. This is God's gospel. This is not man's gospel. This is his gospel. He's the one who chose you. He's the one who brought you here today. He's the one that's going to bring you all the way to glory. Man's not going to do this. He's the one who, he, he, he takes you, brother. He takes you and makes you a servant for him. He makes you a, a laborer. No man can do this. This, you just heard a testimony from a young man who had brain surgery who should have died. But he got up here and said, I am a minister like my father. Who did that? God did that. Life in this world is not the main thing, brethren. God is. What God's doing, he's the main thing. This is our hope. This is our strength. We endure to the end because of this gospel. Because of our God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We endure to the end because of him, not man. Not what men say, not what men do. It's not because of them. We don't get our hope because of what the news says, or what the world says, who the world says we are. We already know who we are in Christ Jesus. We're alive. We're chosen. We're kings and priests. We're going to be judging worlds and angels. Too much concern, too much concern for our lives in this world has to do with the gospel not being preached. If the gospel was being preached, brothers and sisters in Christ would not be concerned with their lives in this world. They would not be consumed with what they would eat and drink and wear tomorrow. They would be concerned about what God thinks about them. And he will provide for us. He will give us what we need. When, God's, when the gospel is preached, God's people disconnect from this world. You have to be disconnected if you're going to be ready when Jesus comes back. Anything connected, let, just think about it this way. When the Titanic was going down, that was not the good time to handcuff yourself to the rail. It was time to be disconnected from that boat. When this world goes down, we don't want to be connected. The gospel disconnects us. It removes us from anything that would keep us to this world. There's a, a saying that my mom used to say to me, sticks and stones will break your bones, but words will never hurt you. That's not true. Words have great effect. Je they didn't crucify Jesus because of his good deeds. They, they crucified him because of what he said. When the gospel is preached, it has an effect. Words are very powerful. It's words that affect how we think and live. We gain great profit and advantage from those who serve and labor in the gospel. Believers thrive and grow in this labor. 
The gospel is the answer to all of our problems. It's not the lottery. It's not good health. Eventually, we're all going to have bad health. That's just the way it is. We are in a cursed world, and we're in cursed bodies, and you can take all the vitamins you want and do all the exercise you want, but eventually you're going to die. If Christ Jesus doesn't come back, you're going to die. It's the flesh, brethren. The, the flesh desires the things that will advantage it in this world. And these are temporary problems in this world. This is, has, these have to do with uh, limited desires. They don't go far enough, these desires that are answered by, the, well, people think, well, if I get great rich, riches, I'll, I'll my, all my problems will be over. Well, you may have more problems if you get great riches. Jesus said, in order to follow him, men must hate their lives in this world. See, this is something only those who are in Christ can understand. Because you can't have enough understanding to understand this truth. The world will never understand this. The world will say, well, before you love anybody else, you've got to learn to love yourself. That's not true. If you're going to love anybody first, you're going to hate yourself and hate this world and become servants of Christ. And he, 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 he laid his life down for the brother. What more love is that? Flesh is bent to the world and the love of life in this world. While we are told it's going to burn up, 2 Peter 3.10. Why would you love something that's going to eventually burn up anyway? You're going to invest your whole everything into something that's going to be gone? We're investing ourselves in something that's going to last for eternity. Amen. We're investing in something that's going to, we're going to be with our God who loves us. Isn't that what you desire to be loved? Who doesn't desire to be loved? God, he made us in his image. And so he's making a people for himself to be with him. So we have the same desire in us. We desire to be with our God. See, that's what happens in the flesh. Before you became a Christian, you, you're, you're going to different places, trying to fit in so bad. You just wanted to fit in anywhere. I did. I, I, I just, I, I didn't fit in over here. I didn't fit in over there. I just wanted so badly to fit in somewhere. When all the while, what I really needed was to fit in in glory. Amen. I wasn't made for this place. It's going to burn up. But the gospel set you free of that. See, the gospel sets you free of these desires that are too low. Not, they're too low because we're made for something much higher. We'll never be fulfilled in this world. We'll, we, we'll, we'll, we'll grapple and we'll, we'll try to go up the, the ladder and we get to the top and we find out we still don't fit in. It's not high enough. But the gospel goes high enough. All who serve and label, labor in the gospel bring hope to the hopeless. Our eyes are open to what's up ahead. Talking more about our lives in this world has no power, but the gospel does have power unto life. The, the gospel gives God's people a handle on the kingdom of God. Amen. You're able to see and perceive what God has for you. See, there's... There's nothing in this world that can compare to what we got up ahead. So if there's, if there's anything that you have in this world that you see that is good, it's going to be better there. You have a good wife? Well, that relationship you have is just going to excel. There's not going to be, there's not going to be we're not going to marriages in, in glory, we're, but we're going to have a relationship in Christ Jesus. We're going to be one body in Christ. The gospel shows us this, that we're going to be one body and that whatever you have in this world is just going to, is, is just going to explode into glory. We're never, 
what I'm saying here, what the gospel shows us, what I'm saying here is we're never going to look back and say, but, you know what, it's everything I thought it was going to be up here, but I did miss one thing down there. And it's not as good here as it was down. You're never going to say that in glory. The gospel will show that to you. All opposition to the gospel has never stopped the spread of the gospel, and it never will. It actually helps it. When God's people ha have been, when, when the devil has gone after God's people, it actually, you know what it has done? It's made it spread. You go after God's people, and you, what you do? You spread them all over the place. And they, they continue to just preach and serve and labor in the gospel. This is how the gospel is. It has power. God gives the power to serve and labor in the gospel. Not the world. The, the world doesn't give us the credentials. God does. He makes servants. He makes laborers. God is with all who labor and serve in the gospel. Christ's disciples, disciples were not trained speakers from the world's perspective. God gives a desire and he fans it. He makes people willing to, to, to preach until death. See, the disciples, they would have, uh, they would have needed to go to Bible college and seminaries to be able to preach the gospel in most churches today. To serve and labor in the gospel, they would uh, need ad additional education. That's not who Jesus picked, though. Whether you agree with me or not, that's not who he picked. He picked fishermen and tax collectors, doctors. And yes, even he had women with him that labored in the gospel. If you don't believe me, just read, just read it, look it up. Paul said in Philippians 4.2, I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help these women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers, whose names are written in the book of life. All who have a mind of Christ can labor for Christ in the gospel. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold, Matthew 24, 12. God is looking for those who want to be laborers with him, who want to serve with him. Today, to serve and labor in the gospel, God's pe people must go against religious tide. The gospel is not popular today. If it was, this building wouldn't be enough for us. We would have had to get a football stadium or two. But it's not popular. Men replace it with uh, their agenda. They have their own agenda. As the truth of the gospel is preached, the people of God will avoid being swallowed up with trends of the time. The gospel anchors our soul. It doesn't allow us to be here, just blown here and there. We become secure in the gospel. Without saints that care for, the, care for and labor for the gospel, we would all still be enemies of the cross of Christ. The, the Lord uses God's people to bring the gospel, to preach the gospel, and then continue in the gospel. Today, instead of the gospel edifying the church, and helping God's people prepare for the Lord's return, we have uh, all kinds of things that's replaced it. Things that, uh, that is it, it's just a little better for the flesh to handle, for the flesh to swallow. But Jesus is coming back, and we must be ready. The gospel prepares us for that. All who labor in the gospel will be blessed by God. The labors will not be wasted. The world, they, they see what, the world sees what we're doing as a waste of time. 
We could be doing better things. Brother Given told me, he said one time somebody told him he could have been a doctor or something. But see, he saw something better. The gospel showed him something better. I'm not against doctors. I go to doctors. Brother Given's with doctors right now. But I'm saying, the, go- the gospel opens it up to us. It shows us what we have in our reward in heaven is better than anything this world can offer. This is good news, brethren. Good news. This will not make a believer lazy or not obedient. The preaching of the true gospel makes workers of the Lord. Actually, you become a worker. When you you hear the gospel, what it does to you, it, it stirs up inside you the thing that God's put inside you to be a worker. Actually, to do more. You know, remember the law, it told you to, to go only so far. In Christ Jesus, we, we will go as much further. There's no limit. We don't have a limitation to where we can go. Because God is pleased with us because of Christ Jesus. See, when you have a pleased God, there is no limitation. See, there are many gods in this world, but they're not pleased gods. They're mad gods. But our God is pleased because of Jesus Christ. It does not bring division. Division comes from men. Satan comes to divide and conquer. But the gospel does not divide. It brings people together. It strengthens and unites the people. Today, division is because of human interest. Throw out human interest and preach the gospel, and you have a united people. It's not a gospel, it's the gospel. The gospel that brings power that is in order to salvation. The true gospel of Christ produces disciples that according to Jesus love him, more than flesh and blood or relatives, Luke 14, 26. They desire to take up their cross daily and follow him, Luke 14, 27. They forsake anything that gets in the way of following Jesus, Luke 14, 14, 33. The gospel produces that kind of people. This is why they serve and labor in the gospel to produce disciples, not for personal gain, If you want personal gain, this is not for you. This is not for you. As a matter of fact, if you're going to preach the gospel, you may have to get a job too. Because this this isn't guaranteed that you're going to have a bunch of friends when you preach the gospel. But the the gospel will will do a work in, in a person. It will produce the real thing. The gospel is universal. No matter what your skin color is, no matter what country you live in, no matter how rich or poor you are, no matter how young or old you are, no matter what language you speak, no matter what time period you were born in, No matter what your political position is, I'm sure it will change after you hear the gospel. No matter if you are a man or a woman, the gospel will reach you wherever you are. The gospel is not for one group of people, but for all. Jesus came to die for all men, that no man should perish, but all have everlasting life. That's the gospel. Everyone... It needs to hear the gospel and continue to hear the gospel. See, we live in a world that is not like we're in a bubble. When you hear the gospel right away, you're going to be attacked. As a matter of fact, your flesh is going to be against you right off the bat. So you already have to contend with your flesh, and then you have a lot of other people that will be more than helpful to your flesh once you hear the gospel. So it's important. This is what makes serving and laboring in the gospel so important. 
It will cause to turn from idols to serve the only living God. The gospel does more than expound one's mind. <clears throat> it moves into the heart. All who believe and embrace the gospel has this understanding that it does not come from men, but it comes from God. And Christ is the point of the gospel. This is how faith and works go hand in hand. Because when the gospel takes, takes a foothold on you, you want to do. Now you became, you, the gospel was preached to you by a, so one that was serving and laboring. And now you want to serve and labor too. You become like Brother Benjamin. I'm not going to sit around and worry about my leg. Let the Lord take care of that. I'm going to preach just as my father did. Just as my father does. This is how faith works. As the gospel is believed, the believer is moved to act. For we see, God, see that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. In Christ we have all we need now to live and when we live unto God, we please him because of Christ Jesus. To please God and not men. Brethren, I exhort you to stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together the faith, one faith of the gospel, Philippians 1.27. To serve and labor in the gospel is something all God's people can do. That all of God's people can take a hold of. Yeah. And that all God's people can be a part of all the way into eternity. Thank you, brother.